Hey, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Morielle. Today, we're going to be talking about 2021 makeup game changers. Anything that I did or learned or found in the year of 2021 that really changed my perspective on my personal aesthetics, my makeup habits, anything that has to do with using, buying, consuming makeup. Keep on watching. We're getting into it right now. Okay, before we actually begin, I do want to acknowledge that I know I look crazy. This was actually a makeup playtime. I just like, I actually took off my makeup because I was done filming for the day. And I realized that my skin was really stained. And so I was like, oh, my skin is stained. Let me just, you know, play with some makeup while my skin is still like this. So that way when I go to take everything off, it can be like, you know, after having done something creative. And so <laughs> I came back here. I had a little bit of gel residue left on my little liner brush. And I thought, you know what? This lip liner brush, it's so weirdly um, wide. But at the same time, the taper gets so teeny tiny. I bet I could do something like fun with this. And I knew I wanted to do a makeup recreation of this really beautiful graphic eye. And so I thought to myself, let me just practice now. And then I just kind of ended up practicing and then I ended up getting the look. I mean, I feel like if I did it again, it would be better. But this is good enough. It's good enough. And <laughs> it just ended up developing and developing. The pink from my face is actually the stain that <laughs> was left behind because I used a purple eyeshadow as blush. And that's why it's kind of splotchy. It's kind of patchy. It's because it's not actually a blush. It's just eyeshadow that never went away. But I did throw on some highlight and I did um, throw on a lip. And so we're, we're going with it. We're filming. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some game changers that I tried in 2021 that have either stuck with me or completely changed my perspective on makeup myself. Um, there's some aspect of each individual item on this list that is transformative in some way shape or form so let's jump into it the first one is a daily SPF habit if not daily then mostly daily um, but I am proud to say that I'm an SPF girl like if I don't wear SPF it's a day that I like I realize I'm not wearing SPF I'm not at a point where like I literally never skip just like you know when you brush your teeth it's just like a habit unless you were sick or ill or <laughs> dealing with something you know mental um, you know for the most part you brush your teeth and on days that you don't brush your teeth like, you realize you don't do it um, and so for me SPF has become that habit now, the interesting thing about that is that I'm not someone who can do SPF like all the way down the neck. I mean, I am trying to be that girl. So nowadays I try to like bring my SPF down, but I wear pretty high necked tops because <laughs> I can't afford to have my titties out. Um, and so not even a little bit, like this is as low as I will go. If I go any lower, like you pretty much just see all the cleavage. So I just, I can't. Um, and so what I do is I try to like get the jaw area, but I feel like you're supposed to bring it like all the way down the decolletage. But one, I just find it annoying because then you have to like wash your whole face with like the neck too. Like you have to scrub everything. You should apply skincare to you. That's going to be this year. That's going to be this. This year thing is the neck thing. I'm trying this year. I'm trying. But last year I am proud that I did wear SPF on most days, like a little, literally on most days I was wearing SPF. I don't know if it changed my skin at all. Um, and SPF is one of those things where like, if you are seeing a difference, then like it's because you're aging. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the whole point is that it's preventing sun damage. And so I don't really know the difference that it's made, but I do think it's a good practice to get into, you know, like a daily sunscreen habit can't hurt. Um, I don't know. I mean, science is, is science saying that SPF is still bad for you? I don't know. As from what I can tell though, I do feel like SPF is a game changer. Generally people talk about SPF as being really good for the skin. So I'm happy that I was able to kind of like adopt that into my routine. And I feel like it's, I talked about this once, but I feel like it's such a given in the YouTube world that like everyone uses sunscreen, but in real life people don't. And so it creates this standard where like we believe everyone is using sunscreen. Like we believe that everyone is doing this when in reality that's not the case. And it makes us feel really bad about ourselves. And so I am actually really, really happy that, um, this year, I allowed myself to not be perfect, not to beat myself up, and just to, to put sunscreen on when I can. And um, when I could was actually a, a lot of times. And so that, that was a great thing. Uh, the next thing that I did that changed the game was my skincare uh, habit has completely shifted away from like a DIY skincare routine. I used to have a skincare routine with like 12 different steps. So it would be like oil cleanser, um, second cleanser, toner slash like ferment, concentrate, serum, eye treatment, then like some other kind of like treatment product like whether it be a retinol or a vitamin c or something and then like um you, you wear like a, a a facial mask and then after the facial mask you have like a wash off mask a put on mask a hydration thing like whatever i mean it was a lot of steps and each time i had to shop for a certain product it'd be like a whole event you know i shop for the vitamin c serum like the niacinamide serum the skincare mask you know like it was a whole big thing and in 2021 i really shifted to a custom formula with Curology and using my Omnilux mask at the end of the year, but really it had started to make a huge difference. Um, the Curology really streamlined the treatment part of my skincare routine 
as well as the washing and the moisturizing because the moisturizer from Curology is the only one that I like. It is a silicone-based moisturizer, which is good because it locks everything in, but it is super, super lightweight. It is very, very comfortable. It's practically invisible on the skin. It just kind of like lightly hydrates the skin, but it doesn't leave like a super sticky, tacky, dewy, occlusive layer. And that's because I have oily skin and I think that's the one that I selected, but I actually surprisingly love the formula of that one. So it made the moisturizing like a no-brainer. I didn't have to think about it. Oil cleansing or like makeup removing, also like I still have to do, that's not a that's not a negotiable topic. But the actual treatment now, like the stress of the treatment is completely out of my hands. It's in a dermatologist's hands um, and she can figure out <laughs> what my skin needs. And what I've noticed is that I don't really deal with clogged pores as much anymore because I'm dealing with Curology or because the Curology active ingredients are kind of constantly resurfacing my skin at a reasonable rate, um, working on discoloration, trying to get my hormonal acne dealt with. I mean, it doesn't get rid of the hormonal flare-ups because, again, you can't really treat that with skincare. That's really just like an internal thing. And that is partially where the Omnilux comes in. So this is my beloved Omnilux mask. It's got blue light, which is good for acne as well because the original one was really just for fine lines, wrinkles, collagen, you know, like elasticity, that kind of thing. It still has all the red light that the other one has, but it also includes blue light, which is great for killing bacteria. So those two things in conjunction, so like lightening up the scars, tightening the skin, like everything has really, really worked. I have to say, I see a huge difference in my skin. And I also feel like it's just less stress, you know, like dealing with more expensive semi-professional products, I feel like has just been such a load off my shoulders because now I'm like not engaged with the skincare world at all. I'm just not interested. I'm not interested because I have stuff that works for me that was either medically prescribed or it it's the same kind of stuff that's at like a Medi Spa, you know? The Omnilux mask is a daily or other every other day treatment that you use and it really kind of targets the main issues of my long-standing skin concerns and my long-term skin health and then the Curology kind of deals with whatever is is flaring up on a regular you know month or two month basis and I think that's working really well for me it's working well enough that I'm not super preoccupied with my skin like sometimes I get flare-ups you know I'm still working through scars but on the whole like my skin is under control as much under control as it can be and you know this is this is part of what I enjoy is like there's a healthy detachment I have to have with perfection where it's like yes I have a skincare routine to maintain the health of my skin and to make sure that my skin is healthy and and happy and things are good but at the end of the day if I were spending like a hundred dollars every month or two months on my skin and I was still having breakouts then it would be like so what were you doing this whole time and was it just to like make you feel better about yourself because that's what I was doing I was buying a lot of skincare um and using a ton of different things like having a routine with lots of different steps and my skin wasn't any better than it is now um, and in fact, my skin is better now and I do less to it. I do less to it and I worry less about it. And so that has been really helpful is just finding a thing that works for me and minimizes the amount of stress and of um, damage that's on my skin and anything else that happens, it happens. It's collateral damage. That's just what tends to, to be the case if you're someone with a period and your hormones fluctuate and you have, um, you know, hyperpigmentation. It is what it is. Okay, the next thing that has really changed the game for me are related to eye accessorizing. So one would be false lashes, big old false lashes. I find out that like on YouTube, um, on camera especially, you kind of need some big ass lashes to pull the look together. And I don't feel like you need them in real life. I feel like in real life, lashes look a lot more dramatic. Um, but on camera, everything kind of reads a little bit more like fantastical anyway. Like I'm not in front of you in real life. Everything is through screen. And also I'm sitting a little bit further in from the camera than I am in real life. In real life, you're like pressed up against people, you know, not as much in COVID, but like still, like if I'm paying for something and like the cashier uh, at the re the register lady like looks down and she's like typing in the buttons or whatever, I can see her entire lash band and it's just not as obvious in talking head videos. And so I really found that I love big old lashes. I feel like they really complement a more alternative makeup style, which is something that I've been into. Um, So I've been using like literally the biggest lashes I can find. These are the Pure Drama lashes that I'm using from Kiss right now. These are gorgeous. I love them. They're in the style ruffle and I cut off just one knot at the very end. I feel like that's usually all I need to cut off of any lash that I use, which is um, like a fun little metric, but pretty much unless the lashes are like ridiculously big, I just cut off one little knot. And um, I also find that I really like a good spiky lash. I don't really like a fluffy lash. So I picked up these ones. These are the Lash Couture Masterpiece lashes. Let me get that out for you guys. So I don't know if you can see, but they're like pretty fluffy all the way through. I mean, there is a little bit of spikiness, wispiness, but I really like a good PC eyelash because I feel like when it's too dense, it doesn't do um, that cartoonish thing that I like with false eyelashes, which is to like create like false 
individual as if like you know I'm an anime character or like I'm a cartoon character you know like when they draw girls and the girls have like individual eyelashes I like that look I don't really like a very dense look because when they're too dense they kind of look like eyeliner and then it kind of just disappears under my eyes but what I need is for a lash to have that spiky individual lash effect and for it to be able to peek through my eyeliner because my eyeliner is really big so yeah finding that out was really fun like figuring out exactly what my preference is for lashes um in real life on camera uh and like the actual shape too like I really like a, a shape that's pretty rounded in the middle like I don't really like a super feline eye because I already have that kind of like feline shape when I do the wing liner and I almost always do wing liner so like coming into my own with false lashes feeling comfortable wearing false lashes feeling like they accentuate my look and they don't make me look clownish or like even accepting the fact that I look a little clownish and that's like the aesthetic I'm going for that has been incredibly liberating it's been liberating because I feel like I can finally achieve the looks I want to achieve without feeling that same sense of like insecurity you know like sometimes you watch I don't know how to put this without being like really really rude sometimes you see like people outside or like they're cosplaying or they're modeling or they're just like young like they're teenagers or something and you see that like they're wearing something that they like or they're doing something that they like but there's also a layer of insecurity around it and so the body language is not fully um embodied like they're not fully embodied they're not fully confident it's like they're wearing what they want to wear but they're they're still feeling a little bit of like doubt or guilt about it or they're not fully confident about it and that's how I feel like I was about lashes um and I feel like you could clock it a mile away I was not super confident and I was just like yeah I'm wearing a false lash but like it's just like a little like natural thing like I don't know can you see it it's shiny like whatever and it's like why you know like I finally got to a place in my makeup routine last year like closer to the end of last year where I was like yeah I'm wearing false lashes they're clearly not real just like the rest of this face is like clearly not a natural look I mean it's one thing if you're trying to do a no makeup makeup look and you want the lashes to look real but this is clearly not a natural makeup look so there's no reason for me to be insecure about the fact that I'm wearing false lashes so coming to that realization was an incredible breakthrough and now I feel like I can really accessorize my my whole look the way I want to accessorize it and now I have the confidence to back it up to make it look seamless and for it to like act as one cohesive thing and with that I also want to talk about like lower lash lines I really last year started to get into lower lash line madness so um over the last year you would have noticed I did a lot of like uh like bright lower rims and then like drawing on false lashes because I just have no lashes down there to put mascara on there's like literally nothing for me to to put mascara on towards the end of uh last year I also started doing like a double wing so I would wing out my eyes and then put white on the bottom and then wing out the bottom lash line and so that was fun as well uh doing the inner corner stuff so like really getting into my inner corner and lining like a complete false lower lash line with eyeliner instead so like really playing with the lower lash line because I feel like the upper lash line I have so much real estate up here from my lash all the way up to my brow that it kind of is all lopsided I mean I have a huge forehead so that kind of helps but I did I did want to start bringing some stuff down and the whole time that I was smoking at the lower lash line just like the regular way the way that I've been seeing on beauty YouTube it is um not exceptionally flattering on my eyes it tends to close them off especially if I don't do some like graphic stuff on the side and so just playing around with the lower lash line has been a really fun breakthrough for 21 and I feel like even though it looks a little draggy I like it I like the effect and I don't really care that it doesn't look it doesn't look natural because again I'm not going for natural I'm going for fun artistic creative vision and I feel like I'm finally living it okay speaking of which uh the nose contour I don't know uh this nose contour might be a little bit whack but I'm having a good time <laughs> I'm having a good Time. I talked about this a bit in my previous video. I think it was a Valentine's Day video. I talked about how like my whole life I've been really really insecure about my nose and I never liked it and I always wanted a nose job and I basically had like a bank account separate for like surgeries and stuff that I wanted because it was just one of those things that truly bothered me even though I get a lot of compliments on my nose and um, people like thought it was cute and no one ever it's not one of those things where um, conventional society says that you have a problem with it like really no one was bothering me about my nose and in fact I think a lot of people do like a, a button nose and like it's small and whatever like I understand that it, it, whatever it's not perfect but like I personally had a lot of beef with my nose because I really wanted it to have like a, a teensy weensy like noticeable nose bridge and I don't have that but when I figured out how to contour my nose um, and you kind of have to like go overboard but again I'm on camera I don't really mind I don't know I think it's because I started seeing like really obvious nose contour online like obvious nose contour obvious overlining of the lips obvious everything like makeup just became okay to show it's okay to show that you're wearing makeup and I was like oh it's okay to show that you're wearing makeup and so now when I contour my nose I actually really like it and I actually like the fact that it's easy to contour my nose it's kind of like my 
my eyes or whatever, right? Like I have a lot of space from here to here. And even though it's not a lot of lid space, it is a lot of space. It's like nice and smooth. I don't really have a lot of like wrinkles or dimples or anything like that. And so that's a blessing. So even though it's not perfect, it's still a blessing. And I feel like um, being able to see my nose in that way was really a game changer. So in 2021, instead of being like, oh, I have to contour my nose. My nose is so like short or whatever. It doesn't have a nose bridge. I have to contour it or I don't have any definition. It's more like, hey, look, your nose has nothing to get in the way of whatever contour shape you want. You can make it as snatched, as natural, as bold. You know, you can do literally whatever because there's literally nothing here. It's like completely flat. Uh, there's also like nothing to be worried about because there's no like crookedness. I know a lot of people with crooked noses find it hard. And I'm just, I'm feeling more body neutral, like more body neutral about everything that I have instead of feeling like it's perfect or it's completely flawed. It's just like a tool. But to come from extreme body dysmorphia to the point where like you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror and like hating your reflection to getting to a point where you like look at yourself and you're like, oh my god, my nose contour looks kind of cute actually. That is a feeling of self-acceptance that I never ever would have been able to explain to my teen self that like I would have had. And I don't even mean like 16. I literally mean like when I was 13 or 12 or 11 and I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was thinking like you are so so ugly your nose is so ugly um you know like if you could just fix your nose maybe people would look less at you know less badly at you but then it would be like a long laundry list like it'd be like well if you fix your nose and people would see how crooked your eyes are or if like you fixed your eyes and people would see how like ugly your mouth is and so you know I just had um such a such a really really bad body image um just a self-concept was like really, really negative, especially around physicality. And so when the nose thing started to shift, um, I think I started to accept other parts of myself, which is, which is really cool. Uh, the other thing is a brow shave, brow shaves, brow raises, faux brow raises, I'm calling it. So my natural brows start here and the tails obviously do not end this Hi, this is like a really artificial brow. I actually shave off half my brow and I just shaved it today. Um, speaking of which, love this little razor that I got from Miniso. This style of razor, like the long one with like the really short blade. Very, very nice, very sharp, very easy to work with. And I've been doing it for a long time. I think I was inspired originally by Doja Cat because I love her. She's beautiful. Um, she's an absolute icon. <laughs> and her brows are like really like alien-esque. And I love that look. It's kind of freaky. It's kind of like gross looking. <laughs> not gross, but it's like, it's definitely not like natural, you know, windswept woman. <laughs> it's a very like done up look. And I like that. I've been, I've been leaning into it if you can't tell. And so I feel like ever since I've raised my brow, I've developed like a little bit of a, like a different look, a different aesthetic. It's a little bit more of a, um, groomed, like manicured aesthetic. It's like not a very, na it's not natural, right? So I look a little bit more like someone who puts together their look every day. I don't know how to explain it, but I do like it. And with that, having more real estate, I've been really liking darker makeup. Really a revelation in 2021 is that I have the space to really sculpt my eyes out and to contour them in a way that makes them look a lot bigger. And I think if I compare my makeup from like 2020 to 2021 and 2022, you can really see that I start to optically en enlarge the look of the eyes, um, enlarge the look of all of my features because I have a big face, I guess. And so you know, I have a big forehead and I feel like if I don't do this with my eyes, my forehead just looks really big. And if I don't do the big eyes, then the, the big blush look ends up looking a little bit ridiculous. And my lips too, um, you know, like I just have made everything more proportional. And I feel like I, I like that. It looks really, really artificial, but in a way I feel like I've really grown into it and I've really started to appreciate um, the new artistry that I have kind of figured out with myself, including like a darker, more contoured look. Um, another one, Project Pan advice. <laughs> uh, Project Pan in general. So 2021 is a year that I really threw myself into Project Pan and I was like, okay, this is something I'm going to try. And now I'm like, I'm on it. I've got four projects going on. I feel like four in a month is plenty, especially if they're like different kinds of things. I feel like we are on the right track and, you know, seeing how much I use and love makeup, I realize that like not everyone uses makeup every day and certainly not everyone uses as much makeup as I do every day. And so I'm actually a great candidate for Project Pan as someone who is comfortable on camera, as someone who wears a lot of makeup, as someone who films editorial looks like for camera only as well and someone who wants to like touch and use and use up all their makeup and like they're not scared of getting their stuff gross I realize that project pan is something that is going to be a part of my life and a part of my journey and it just really just changed the perspective for me because again when I think about all those videos I made about project pan and how impactful it is 
it really takes the focus off of products and onto the artistry and away from consumerism and more into mindfulness and just being a mindful user of your stuff, a consumer of your stuff. And that is really fun, um, not just on an artistic level and on a social media level, but also on a personal spiritual level, like for you to take a look at your consuming habits and to take a look at, at like the kinds of things that make you happy, whether something really is going to make you happy or if it's just like a short term thing, that is all due to Project Pan. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. Okay, the next thing is like kind of like a silly one. The idea that like there are no game changers. Like really, uh, there's no point to chase down unicorns for certain things. Uh, for me in my life, a couple of unicorns that I've been trying to chase were mascaras and foundations. So concealers, for some reason, I have a lot of luck with concealers, so it's not a big deal. But for mascara, I was like, I want to find like the perfect mascara at the right price point that does what I want. And it's just like, girl, if your lashes are not good, you're not going to get like thick, luscious, camel lashes from the lashes that you have. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to get this look. This is the look that I want. I'm not going to get it from the lashes that I have that are like one millimeter in length. You know, like it's just not possible. Even if the mascara is really, really good, it can only work with what you have. And so at this point, I've just decided that I'm going to buy the mascaras that work for me, aka Lash Princess from Essence, because that stuff amazing. Um, and it's fine. Like I just, I, I feel like I was really attached to finding the perfect mascara. Um, that doesn't mean I wasn't impressed by different mascaras that I tried. I tried quite a few mascaras last year, but it does mean that I'm not going into a mascara purchase or any purchase for that matter with the unrealistic expectation that it's going to give me something that it cannot give me. You know, if I have dry skin, a foundation cannot give me dewy, wet, hydrated, juicy, oily skin from the inside out. It can only provide that on the surface. Um, or if I have like really uh, bumpy textured skin, no foundation is going to even that texture out. It can maybe even the color out. It can maybe mimic, uh, you know, like the rest of the, the, the evenness on my, my body, but it's not going to give me what I want, which is flat, clean, clear, smooth skin. Um, and with foundation, particularly matching undertones is really tricky for some reason. I just can't find a foundation that's my color at the price point that I want, with the longevity that I want, with the finish that I want, you know, all of those things in general. And it's just, it's okay to settle for a teaser bit less if it just means that you get the peace of mind. And so for me, coming to a point in my makeup journey where I'm like, if the perfect thing falls into my lap or I find it or it prevents, presents itself, that's amazing, but I personally am no longer going to watch mascara reviews until the dead of night because I'm wondering what's going to work on my Asian lashes. It's just not going to be a thing that I spend my time on. I would rather be doing something else. And so that has been really liberating. Okay, last thing that I want to talk about that was a revelation was being on camera and realizing that I have asymmetrical lips. I mean, obviously I do. Um, we all have asymmetrical everything. Uh, for instance, I know my left eye is smaller than my right eye, especially when I smile. And when I was growing up, that was a huge insecurity and uh, actually why I didn't take any photos. I like never took any photos um, unless like my mom would like snap them off me when we were on vacation. But yeah, I would avoid cameras at all costs. I would never smile um, because I never wanted my eyes to look uneven. On camera, for some reason, I don't care in video because I guess like we're all moving around and hopefully no one like stops on a screenshot and sees it. Um, but yeah, like eye unevenness is very common. I know my teeth are, are a little bit uneven and you know I hated my nose anyway, but I did not know that my lips were uneven. And I feel like there's something about like the insecurities you already know about. And then if someone points it out, it's like, yeah, well, you know, fuck you. I already knew that I had this and I'm already insecure about it. So you can't hurt me anymore, you know? But when I found out that I had lip unevenness, I was like, oh my God, this is new. This is like when you stare at yourself on camera and you're like, why does my makeup look so bad? And then you realize you you have something wrong with your face and you didn't even realize it and I'm sure there's going to be the opinion that like there's nothing wrong with asymmetry like there's nothing to correct for and I agree but I just think like as someone who is trying to achieve like a certain type of makeup symmetry now that I know that about myself being able to correct for it has made me so much more confident like when I watch back my videos um in more recent times the ones in which I've corrected like I, I overlined the side of my mouth that has that slight dip where there's clearly less volume in the lips. I just feel so much happier. And again, it, it goes back to that idea that like, I'm not going to look natural. That's okay. I'm also like not pressed that I don't look natural, but I do think the difference is that for me, there's a peace of mind in knowing that um, I was able to execute what I wanted to do a little bit better. I wanted to, ex I was able to execute it in a way that was a little bit closer to the vision I had in my head. And now that little thing that bothered me before is fixable. And so, yeah, that's everything. Uh, I don't know, it feels like a lot of, of rambling about nothing, but for some reason I really feel happy getting this stuff off my chest because for some reason I feel like, you know, 2021 is not the first year that I had my makeup channel, but for some reason it feels like the first year that I really owned it from beginning to end. You know, I really committed to it. I got a lot of subscribers, so thank you so much for watching if you guys are here. And I feel like I matured a lot as a makeup user, as a makeup lover, as someone who can really forge out my own identity as a makeup 
a consumer and user and art, makeup artist, right? Like someone who uses makeup and, and likes it as a creative form of self-expression. Not just for like crazy artistic looks, but also like for, for everyday mundane, you know, basic bitch looks. I, I love that too. But I've, I've really come into my own in, in being secure about that and not feeling like I have to fight for my place at the table or like justify myself or feel like, you know, the makeup covers up like a, a world of sin underneath. It just, it just is what it is. And what it is, is fun, creative uh, expression of the self. And that's really liberating. The fact that I got there at the end of the year really shows the difference in the psychological state I was in. Like in the beginning of 2021, well, I think frankly, we were all messes, but I have been a hot mess for like three years before that. Like I was really not in a good space for the last three years of my life since we started that year. Um, and then at the end of it, where thing kind of, things kind of just came full circle. And I remember that not only is makeup a thing that has been in my life this whole time that was providing me uh, happiness and just joy on a surface level, but it's also provided me a deep sense of gratitude and and security in who I am and what I am. And so, yeah, sappiness aside, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some game changers, stuff that really uh, changed my perspective about makeup and, and my life. And, um, you know, now that I go forward, you know, into the future, I know exactly those tips, those realizations can help me be a better user, shopper, buyer, wearer, and, you know, reviewer of makeup. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this crazy, weird, rambly video. I love you. Let me know if there are any revelations that you had in the last year, any game changers, any products, any routines. Let me know. I'm so, so, so curious. I love you, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.